Hey, I'm Pastor Joey Miller, and I want to welcome you to the Joey Miller Podcast. And I have a special guest for us today. I was able to snag up my hubby, my favorite pastor in the world, to join us today for the podcast. And we are talking all about communication. Yeah, so it's great to be with you. I'm a big fan of the podcast. So it's always great to come on and yeah. talk all I, things. I thought this would, yeah. Relationship. One of the biggest questions that I get um, is on marriage. And so I thought this would be a great time to just really address one of the biggest hindrances in a healthy marriage, whether you're Christian, non Christian. One of the biggest stress factors comes from the word communication, ironically enough, and, and how the enemy loves to work uh, in our miscommunication to bring strife and chaos uh, into our relationships. And so I want to take a couple minutes and we want to break down how you can communicate well, why we don't communicate well, and, and really how we really need to get this area in our lives right. And this can be applied to any relationship in your life. So if you're watching today and you're like, I'm not married, I'm single, I, I want you to take these communication tips and really uh, implement them in a healthy way to see every relationship grow. So let's talk about communication. Why do you feel like, you know, we do marriage counseling, uh, we, we talk to couples, the communication is such an area of breakdown in relationships. Yeah, you know, first off, you look at the very beginning um, in Genesis, there, the breakdown is communication. You know, it, it starts with communication. The serpent came to Eve and said, didn't God say this? And he, he uses only partial truth. And so if Adam and Eve are communicating properly and uh, Adam is taking his role and there is that aspect of communication, which, by the way, is, is not just one thing. This is just one thing. I know you're going to talk about it, but um, you know it, the communication. There was a an evident breakdown in communication uh, that really caused the enemy to have his way in their lives, and I see that in relationships today, as you stated, whether it's in a marriage relationship or a friendship, or sometimes many of our family relationships are dysfunctional because we're not communicating properly. And so, you know, I'm excited to dive into it, but it's a topic that I think we see at the beginning. Adam and Eve dealt with it. Um, That's how the enemy came and worked in their relationship and ultimately um, caused them to fumble, to stumble and fall. But we also see that it's a problem throughout, uh, throughout the Bible. This communication that people um, aren't communicating properly and uh, it's causing the breakdowns. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think about in uh, James where it says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Quick to listen and slow to speak. And so many times we think communication is just about putting everything out there that we have to say, everything that's on our minds. You know, if we're in a conversation and, and, and before we know it, I could be telling you everything that I have to say, and then I shut off and I start to think, what do I want to say next without hearing a response or really seeking to understand. And really, the heart of communication isn't just being heard, but really being understood. And I feel like that's where a lot of couples get it wrong, that we're not taking time because of busyness, um, because of the, the forms of communication that we have with text messages mm-hmm. nowadays. I mean, how many times have you text somebody and your tone was taken all wrong because of punctuation. I know our daughter Mia, if I'm driving, I'm like, hey Mia, can you compose a text? And and I'll read it after and be like, oh my goodness, this person Mm. probably thinks that, you know, because how they text nowadays, there's no punctuation and a lot can be lost uh, in translation, so to say. And so really uh, re-looking at communication and redefining it and understanding that there's lots of ways that we communicate, but one of actually a way of communication that's so undervalued is active listening. And so we talk about uh, this with couples who uh, maybe come into our office and they're like, they're just not understanding what I'm saying. Well, well, it's because they're not truly listening to the heart behind the matter. We're just trying to spew our whole case from our perspective, and that's just the way it is, and we're not open to listening to somebody else. Yeah, you know, as you stated, uh, James 1.19, the, the first thing he says, he talk, he's talking about communication, and the first piece he presents is listening. 
Uh, why? Because as you stated, we're so good at getting things out. But James was saying we should be quick to listen. And, you know, it's not just listening to what they're saying. It's listening to their heart. It's sometimes hearing, man, they're frustrated. Well, you know, why are you frustrated? Why are you? What is the breakdown in communication? And, you know, you've heard it said, you know, God, God's given us two ears, one mouth. We should be listening uh, twice as much as we should be speaking. Why? You know, James was pointing out that you're not hearing one another. You're not communicating in a way where you're listening to them. You're understanding where they're coming from. And as you stated, the goal of communication is to understand. Okay. So when I'm seeking to understand, I'm listening to more than just what you're saying. I'm trying to hear your heart because a lot of times in all of our relationships, sometimes what you're saying or the frustration you might be feeling really has nothing to do with the words that you're saying. A lot of times it, it has layers to it. And so me having a heart that's positioned to seek to really listen to more than just words, I'm trying to hear their heart. When I'm looking to hear and understand their heart, their perspective, because let's be honest, you know, and you and I, um, not only do we deal with this, you know, as we went into marriage, but the reality is you still deal with it no matter how many years you're married is, is we are two people that are wired differently, come from different backgrounds. And if we don't have this common goal of seeking to understand, then we're just going to be word blasting each other and wondering why we're not connecting. Yeah. And going to separate corners and, and being frustrated and having that wall in What's interesting is not only uh, do we have to deal with this with each other, but especially as our children grow older mm -hmm. and within the household, we have teenagers and adults uh, learning to communicate in a way that you're listening to even your family, uh, to your children is so important to hear their heart, to truly seek not to be right, but to understand where that person's coming from is so important. And, you know, a lot of married couples don't do that. They don't really sit down and say, you know, I really... My goal is to resolve this. No, their goal is to be right in this situation mm -hmm. and to step back and say, what is my motive? I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to listen. Even though uh, the perception of, of what they, they're thinking might be off, uh, I'm going to try to understand where they're coming from so that I can be, first of all, compassionate and empathetic towards them and that, so that I can bring truth into the situation in a loving way way. And, you know, we can do that uh, with different forms and, and tones and body language and different types of communication. But, but, you know, to truly seek to understand isn't, well, you're wrong. Like, you shouldn't mm -hmm. be thinking that. That's not true. It would be, I'm sorry that you feel that way. I'm, you're connecting with how they're feeling in that mm -hmm. moment, yet bringing truth to the situation, bringing clarity. I'm hearing, I'm listening, you're hurt. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing, I'm listening, you, you thought I did this, but let me just bring clarification because I love you. And, and when you do that and you use those tones in the right moment, it changes the whole dynamic of the conversation. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things you, you mentioned is, is empathy, you know, is that where I'm, I'm not just, cause this is what guys will typically do. And I've done this to a fault um, and, and try to grow in this area. But, you know, most of the time when women are communicating to men something, um, they don't necessarily, matter of fact, most of the time they're not asking you to fix it. Um, men are wired to fix things though. So this is very much attention while you're hearing things as a man. Your goal is not to try to start fixing them first. At some point you can get to that in the conversation, but wouldn't you agree when a woman, when, when a woman is communicating, most of the time she's not asking you to fix it. She just wants to make sure that her voice is being heard and that you identify. That's really what part of empathy is. I'm empathizing. I'm able to feel what you're feeling. I'm able to understand the emotional state of my wife. And I'm, she knows that I'm actually feeling what she feels. And that is the key, really, to, to, to connecting, I believe, between a man and a woman 
is that piece of empathy because so many times in the past, I always wanted to fix yeah. the problem for you. And well, you weren't asking. And a lot of times a woman can be trying to communicate with her spouse um, and feel very alone still because you know, of the lack of empathy. Um, mm -hmm. I was in the car with my daughter, my teenage daughter, not too long ago, and she said, Mom, can we just have a talk? And I was like, yeah, sure. And she said, I don't want you to be Pastor Joey right now. I want you to be my mom. And I'm like, uh, how do I disconnect? Like, I'm one person. Like, I'm consistent. Hmm. So, yeah. so what she was really saying was, she said, I don't want you to fix it. I just want you to hear me out because I, mm -hmm. like you with our daughter, I try to fix it. This is the yeah. right thing that you should do. And she knows the right thing to do. I know when I'm communicating with you, yeah. I know the right thing to do. At the end of the conversation, I know. Uh, and, and But those moments you just need someone to relate to, like, yeah, you know what? That does suck. Yeah, you know what? That person did hurt you, and I'm sorry. And, mm -hmm. and not that you play into the pity party, but that moment of connection, or I understand how I made you feel uh, in that moment. That wasn't my intention though, but I understand how it could have made you feel that way. Like just that moment of connection uh, really makes the other person feel heard and felt. And it really opens the door now for a, a wider conversation of, I get it, that sucks, but but this is what what the Lord wants to do in this situation. And and if that person's just always going straight to the point or trying to fix the situation or trying to tell you what the right thing to do is, it doesn't give you the space to really feel and connect and mm -hmm. communicate yeah. in a way uh, that you feel that connection. So two people can be yeah. communicating and still feel very alone if there's not that attribute of empathy. Yeah, you know, uh, and I think, you know, you look at it from the beginning. God said, Listen, this is the reason a man will leave his, uh, his mother and father and be united. You know, one version says that to leave and cleave, it's this oneness that God created us uh, to walk in. You know, um, it's a oneness of understanding one another, communicating, understanding, you know, emotional needs, physical needs, all of these things, social needs, um, that we stay one in that. And when, when I'm just looking at it, from a you versus me, or I'm just looking to try to fix it all. I'm really just still focused on me. And, and, and so, you know, when I'm looking to, to really be united in oneness in our communication, I really have to go beyond what I'm thinking sometimes and really try to put myself in your shoes in that moment. What is she feeling? What is she thinking? Um, and and when I can identify with where you are and you're hearing that, that's too when you feel understood and valued, and then you're you're less frustrated, you know, um, and you feel that companionship, you feel that oneness when I'm able to identify that that area that you're feeling frustrated or whatever it might be. Um, sometimes it's hurt, you know, whatever that might be. When I'm empathizing with you. Um, there's a connection that's happening that's so important to marriages. And if you don't get that connection, you know, a lot of times people look to other relationships for that. And you don't want that breakdown in your marriage, especially. So. No, and even early on in our relationships, you know, you were trying so good and you're such an amazing priest and you always lead in my heart in good ways. But so like you took that so seriously and you still do but lacked maybe some empathy to the mm -hmm. point where I always felt like, are you on my side or are you not on my sure. side? And so uh, sometimes you just need that to know that person is on your side, even though you're both going to do the right thing. Like, but, but I relate to what you're saying in this situation. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, really uh, having an empathetic moment, truly listening, seeking to understand that other person brings about uh, amazing connection within yeah. the relationship, you know. And another thing uh, that I want to talk about is really being completely present in our communication. In the day and age that we live in, uh, a lot of times we're not present, we're not communicating in a way that we're both present in the moment to really have the opportunity to understand. It's a quick text. It's, uh, yeah, uh, at dinner on my phone, you'll see couples at dinner and they're both on their phone uh, during the dinner where they, they have that opportunity to really commune and with one another. And so in a digital society, speak into that for a second about the importance of disconnecting from this to connect with this. Yeah. Well, you know, I think the first thing we have to understand is you can really only do one thing at a time very well. Um, there's 
with the busyness of life, with all the demands in our schedule, we have come up with this idea of multitasking and multi, I can do 10 things at one time, but we're really not created in a way that we should be doing 10 things at one time. We, we should be focused on doing one thing and pouring our energies and time into it. And what's going to happen too is if you don't learn to put the devices away, um, you know, especially at the dinner table. You know, I, I was took uh, some of the family. You were um, you had something you were doing with the girls. I had uh, the boys. I was doing something with last night, and the boys had their phones out at the table. And I said, you know, when we're at the table, we don't have our phones out. Let's put those down. Um, you know, and there's always going to be an excuse. But what is it? And and I just said, you know, we're not going to connect if you're on that That's device. Right. And so, and what you're communicating to that person, whether you realize it or not, whether you want to or not, is you're really not that important to me. I'm going to take care of some other things. I'm going to multitask. I love that because, you know, especially if you look at the way a man and a woman, woman are created, uh, women can, first of all, think that we're multitasking well. So I could be at the, at the kitchen counter and I could be making dinner and, and uh, you know, responding to a text and listening to my daughter talk. And I find that it looks like we're communicating. It looks like I'm engaged with her. But really, all I'm doing is, uh-huh, oh, oh, that's great, uh-huh. Yep. And I'm not truly engaging with her. So that's a false sense of multitasking successfully while communicating. And and then if you look at the way a man is built, you men really uh, – are built to focus on one thing at a time. So, so if they're on their phone, they're not hearing what you're saying either. So, mm -hmm. so understanding, I love that principle of being bold enough in the society that we live in, especially when we're having like heated conversations or deep conversations with our spouse, to put the phone away. Stop scrolling. And, and sometimes we do it out of habit. Sometimes we've been in a serious conversation and you're like, would you please put your phone away? It's a yeah. habit of just, because we're so habitual of just doing it. And, and I think honestly too, we need to be in an honest, transparent way. We need to have, give each other the right that if you ever feel like my phone is, is being a priority of distraction, to in a loving way you know, say something like, can we just both put our phones down for the moment and it, focus on each yeah, other? The way you say it is so important because in our household, we've tried this before and it always comes back to, well, you're always on your phone or, or I'm not on my phone that much or that defensive mechanism. Yeah, but, but, the, but the point is, is like we have to start being intentional about that because it's so bombarding us that if we don't, sometimes we don't, we're not even aware ourselves. And so we need to give each other the right to speak into each other's lives to say like, hey, if you ever bring this up, I'm, you know, as long as, as you said it, you bring it up in the right tone. I'm never going to be offended. I'm going to choose not to be offended sometimes. I'm going to hear you because if we don't give each other the permission to bring each other into an awareness, we will drown in the social media, in the media world, in the news outlets, and everything that's bombarding us. There is way too much coming at us. And we need to have those honest, open discussions to say, like, hey, can we just take a few moments and you and I connect? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we have to give each other that permission. You know, you might even say it to your spouse, if I'm ever on my phone and you're feeling a disconnect, then in a loving way, just say something to me. Yeah. And I give you that right, and you give me that right. And as long as we're doing it out of the motive of love, because we do want to connect, I almost feel like it's a necessity in the world we live in that we must give each other that permission, and we must look to create those boundaries that the, the media craze will never, it's never going to be enough. Mm -hmm. It's an addiction people have. Yeah. So we creating those boundaries through communication is going to give us a deeper sense of connection. To your point earlier, yes, can I do five things and juggle five things at a time? Yes. How effective am I, though? And do I connect beyond a surface level? Multitasking is okay for some things, but most things it's really not. Right. If I'm, especially when it comes to relationships, I can't, quote, multitask. I want to think about it. When we're sitting together, I want to give you the best of me. Mm -hmm. You and I have some of the greatest conversations when we go on dates. Why? 
because we're we're so focused in that we can go more in depth. Yeah. And the and my thing is today, most of our relationships are so surface. Because we, we want to try to do 10 things at one time. We're not really focusing well, on the and, individual. You know, and as a couple, like those conversations that we have are more intimate than anything. Mm -hmm. So if you disregard those moments of connection, then you're going to lose an element of intimacy in your relationship that affects every other mm. area of intimacy in your relationship. So, so connect, connect, be empathetic, connect in ways where you're giving each other fully engaged attention. And then uh, obviously there's different ways that we communicate. We communicate with our body language. We yeah. communicate with the way that we say things, an eye roll, a smirk, you know, guard your communication. What are you communicating? But lastly, I want to hone in before we leave uh, this podcast today. And, and I really want to talk about when we communicate. Mm -hmm. um, it's so important, especially during those heated moments. I feel like people don't know how to fight well. Yeah. There's a way to fight well, to communicate and resolve conflict. It's not always like the leave it to beaver uh, house where it's like, oh, geez, golly, you know, yeah. it's going to be uh, just everything swell today. There's moments where people live in a household that there's conflict and it doesn't have to be always a knockdown, drag out fight. Mm -hmm. There's ways that you can communicate even during conflict that can bring about a, a deeper intimacy, a deeper empathy, and a resolve. But it matters a lot of times, not only how, we talked about that briefly, your body language, how you express your tones, but when. And that's what I want to focus on because this was a big issue when we first got married and it took us years to really figure yeah. this out. Oh yeah, we had some good fights, you know. We had some intense fights. Um, you know, I, I think the first thing is when it comes to, to communications is humility has to be there. Love and humility are essential. Um, the Bible says a gentle answer turns away wrath or, or anger. And so, you know, how we're feeding the relationships either going to go in the way of love to feed the love we have, or it's going to feed self. It's going to feed me, you know, as a person. My focus becomes selfish, self-centered. You know, and the more we make it about love and go in that direction, you know, when things are heated, instead of, you know, when I'm feeling tension, or sometimes, let's be honest, attitudes in the relationship, if, if the other spouse will, will take the lead, so to say, and say, you know I love you so much. You know, is, is, something, is there something that's bothering you today, and how can I help? Not, are you in a bad mood? <laughs> you know, that's like the worst. But it's like, hey, you know, it really seems like there's some frustration here. Can we talk about that for a minute? So you're under pressure or, or what's going on? Because there's a lot of pressure. You and I were talking about that the other day. We have so many different pressures around us that if we're not, care be if we're not careful, we'll feel so much pressure that the, the people we love the most, <laughs> we're just going to explode on them, you know? And it's, so it's like we have to be communicating. And we've got to communicate in ways that, you know, are, we're connecting and we're understanding one another. You've heard the, the acrostic, you know, um, hot communication. Humble, open to what you have to say, the O, and then transparent with one another. Mm -hmm. And if we had the humility and we had that love, then we're going to be able to connect in a way where it's not about competing, it's about completing That's good. each other. That's so good. And, you know, uh, it's so important too that you understand your spouse and especially how they respond. We like we think everyone just responds to conflict, responds to hurt the way that we do. And when we were first married, uh, he's a, a confrontational, assertive personality, so he just wants to resolve everything right away. Let's, let's just deal with yeah, it. Let's, let's just get, get it over with. And and we learned through the years that whenever we would both do that, I would feel because I am more of a let me think about it, Process. let me articulate my feelings, let me yeah. figure out how I want to say this. Uh, in a way that is true to my communication of what I'm feeling. And so what would happen was when he would come and want to just, even though his motive was good, let's make up, let's talk about this, I would feel like I was being pushed in a corner mm -hmm. and it would actually Trapped. cause a, a, he, a heated fight. So it took years for us to realize the best way when we feel like we are in a heated discussion is for uh, him to give me a little bit of time. Not You have to set a time. Like, let's come back in 20 minutes and yeah, talk about this. That's the important not, part of it. The assertive person, which would be me, would just never talk about it. Or the not unassertive, 
an assertive person, less assertive, whatever, when we just not talk about it. So we have to put that timeline on it and say, okay, in 20 minutes, we're going to come back and we're going to have this conversation. And so many times, like by the time we came back and sat down, we would just laugh and talk about it. Like it was just no big deal. So, you know, a lot of it is knowing when to communicate about something. You know, if you're, uh, if you want to have a financial talk about budget, maybe when you're doing the bills and your husband's ticked at you, isn't the best time to do it. Like be wise about that. Like the right times, if you're, if you're unhappy with, with maybe your intimate life maybe like during that moment isn't the best time to have that conversation like mm -hmm. uh, be wise about when uh, to have those conversations and how to have them maybe your, your spouse needs a little mm -hmm. bit of space so. yeah and I love how you said that you know uh, think about you know you think about even like a business you know a business is talking about what are they talking about they're talking about their finances they're talking about their systems you know and that's when you look at relationships we should be talking about every area that that's really good. matters to us I love what you said you know sometimes we need to talk about intimacy sometimes we need to talk about finances sometimes we need to talk about uh, creating boundaries or our social connection. Uh, whatever our spiritual connection. And so when it comes to relationships, we need to make sure that we're communicating and we're paying attention to these major areas that cause either connection or disconnection. And so, you know, when you look at those things, you know, there is nothing that we can't and shouldn't be talking about as a couple. We should be engaging in these discussions, in these areas that are important to have a healthy relationship. So good. Well, I hope that you learned a lot about communication today. We're still learning, but here's some nuggets that we have learned together. Yeah. And we pray that your marriages are blessed and you truly learn to thrive in the area of communication and shut out the work of the enemy who wants to come in and bring disunity and chaos. We're praying your marriages thrive all of 2022. Till next time on the Joey Miller Podcast. I'll talk to you soon.